The USA Radio Network presents the greatest radio programs of all time. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Gunsmoke! This is classic radio theater. James Stewart as the six shooter. Have gun. Will travel. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. Now here's your host, Wyatt Cox. Western Adventure, John Daner, starring as J.D. Kendall, the frontier gentleman, from July 20th, 1958. In Laramie, Wyoming Territory, I met a square-jawed sheriff named Will Harper and his slack-jawed deputy named Clem. Um, I also lost twenty dollars. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. taken the stagecoach from Dry Creek and was on my way back to Cheyenne. Beside myself, there were two other passengers. One, a gaunt, stern-faced man named Barnaby, who spent most of his waking hours reading from the Bible. The other, Thad Clark, a miner who, having made a modest fortune, was on his way to his home in Illinois. It was late afternoon, the stage lurching along the well-worn road a few miles to the west of Laramie. I tell you, fellas, I'm going to order me a a dozen fresh eggs and all the fancy fluff duffs they got in the best eating place in Laramie. A man should not be a slave to his stomach. Well, it ain't exactly I'm a slave, Mr. Barnaby. I I sure won't mind pampering it for a while. If you'd eaten as much jerky and drunk as much brown gargle as I have, you'd go along with me. I'd go along, Mr. Clark. Once, you know, once for two months... I had to live on nothing but dried fish and rice. It was in India. A heat, even land. Uh, you know, I got a ha- hankering to do some traveling. Might be I'll take a trip out there, China, India. I got me enough gold dust in that little box to do a lot of things like that. The love of money is the root of all evil. Well, if it is, I'm sure going to find out when we hit land. What is it? What's the matter? The riders. Blocking the road. Now don't get scared, folks. Just a hold up. Hold up? Yeah, if you got guns, keep them where they are. There's too many of them to put up a fight. My gold. Listen, I worked three years for that. Let's shoot it out. What do you say, Kendall? You got a gun. Now look out the window. Five, six of them. Odds are against us, I'm afraid. On horseback, their faces completely masked, cradling rifles and shotguns in their arms. Two of them remained in front of the coach. Three more took up positions to either side and behind. The sixth man, who appeared to be the leader, called to us to get out. Our driver nonchalantly climbed down from his seat and began to roll a cigarette. The miner Clark stood next to me, right hand clenched, hovering over his gun butt. You, mister, and you. Do you mean me? No. No, the tall fella and the other one. Unbuckle your gun belts and drop them. No need for anyone to get hurt. I'm a poor man. I have no worldly goods. Sorry to hear that, brother. You a preacher? No. That's too bad. I never rob a sky pilot. Just empty out your pockets, all of you. Driver? Yeah? What you carrying? Nothing much. Well, we'll take a look-see. Jed, Frank, keep them covered. See, do you help me search them? 
right. Driver, climb up there and throw down the boxes. Sure. All right, James. Nice and quiet. Let's tell your kids all about it. Kind of a puny wallet. Don't take that. It's all I have. Thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Well, now you ain't got any worldly goods for sure, friend. What about him, CD? A few dollars is all. You take a look in the coach. All uh-huh. right. Driver, climb down. Open up them boxes. Sure. All right, now you, mister. Here. Yeah. You won't find much. Well, it's a right handsome looking watch you got there. I like it. Take it off. No. <laughs> Come on now, take it off. It has a great sentimental value to me. It can't be worth more than a few dollars to it you. It all adds up, mister. Take it off. No. <laughs> you figure it's worth your life? In a way. Hey! Hey, look at here what I found! Huh. Who belongs to this? It's mine. Guess it ain't no use asking you to leave it be. That's a fact. It sure breaks my heart the way you river snipers have to sweat to get that much dust. Give them back a sack of it, CD, and see what's in them other boxes. Here you are, Father. Enough for grubs. Yeah, about that watch. Is it worth killing me for it? <laughs> Mister, that's a plum low code question. I plugged a fellow once over a chaw of tobacco. What's your name? Kendall. I like to meet a man with guts. All right, you keep that watch, Kendall. It's a present. And the breeze, boys, is right. It's coming up the road. So long, sir. Mark, pick up your gun. Hey, you got one. You got him. The wounded man clung to his saddle for a few yards, then toppled over, fell to the ground and was still. The others disappeared in a cloud of dust along the road to the west. A moment or two later, a group of horsemen rode up. They were led by an exceedingly tall man wearing a large and rather ornate badge. Where'd you to go? Hey, they went that way. They hey, took Kendall, my here, money. got one. He's lying Everything right over the eye. I have. You must get it. Clam me on the boards. Get after him. We do that, Jeff. You uh, recognize any of them, Devin? No. Must be new around here, Sheriff. I never did see him before. I figure I've been held up by most of the hold-up men in the territory. All right, let's take a look at that fellow you shot. Lucky few gents, we came along. Very lucky. Sure hope your boys catch up with them. Don't worry, we'll get them. Mm. Well, that's the last roundup for this outlaw. Plumb through the head. Nice shooting, mister. Well, let's get that mask off. Uh, any of you ever see him before? I no, told you. I no, I, no. No papers. I didn't think there would be. Well, I guess you gents can go on your way. I'd be obliged if you'll stop by my office in Laramie and make out a report of what was taken. Name's Harper. Will Harper. Hey, uh, you're new in Laramie, ain't you, sure? Yeah, just took over last month. Aim to do some cleaning up. You got no worries. We'll have your valuables back by tonight. The sheriff followed his posse. We went on to Laramie. On our arrival, Mr. Barnaby went off with a severe-looking woman whom I assumed to be his wife. Thad Clark was kind enough to take me to dinner. Afterwards, we walked down to the sheriff's office. He sat behind his desk, powerful, square-jawed, steely-eyed, the picture of an iron-nerved man of the law. At a smaller desk, his discreet deputy was filling out some papers. Harper looked up as we came in, nodded briskly. Evening, gents. Sit down, sit down. Clam, fetch another chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Harper. You caught those fellas, huh? We trailed them, all right. <laughs> Make yourself come. Uh, thank you. I... Gather that you didn't catch them? Well, like I say, we know where they are, just a matter of time. My deputy here, Clem, he's making out the report right now. I'd better get back to it, Clem. Yes, sir, Mr. Harper. Now, uh, you uh, want to give me a list of what was stolen? 
Not much of a list, Sheriff. Just ten sacks of gold dust, about $5,000. You get that, Clem? I sure did, sir. And uh, you, uh, Kendall's the name, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, $20 in my wallet. Uh, Kendall, Kendall. Uh, say, aren't you that English newspaper fellow I heard about back in Cheyenne? I'm an English newspaper man, yes. Well, I'm proud, mighty proud. I reckon you'll be writing all this up for your paper. I imagine I will. Good, good. And you'll get a chance to see how we take care of bad men in Laramie. Things are going to be different around here. I'd admire to have you stick around, Kendall. We've got new methods, scientific, like they've been using in the East. That's fine, but what about my gold? Those hold-up boys must be in Colorado by now. <laughs> you hear that, Clint? <laughs> I sure did, sir. That's a funny one. Very funny. <laughs> I'll tell you where they are, gents. Right this minute, I can put my finger on them. But I'm going to wait for morning. They're holed up in the Centennial Mine. Digging about 30 miles west of here. That's where we traveled them, isn't it, Clem? That's the place, sir. We got four men watching right this minute. Kendall, how'd you like to ride out with me in the morning and uh, watch us pull in a bunch of outlaws? It'd be very interesting, Sheriff. Oh, this will be just about the most important story you've ever read. And I'll be glad to help you make your name, Kendall. Ah, uh, well, well, that's awfully kind of you. Sheriff! Thank you. Sheriff! I've seen one of them. Maybe two, maybe all of them. Well, now, now, easy, pardon me. I, I tell you, they're down at Lazy Kate's saloon. Them same fellas did the hole up this afternoon. No, no, driver, it can't be. We know where they are. We sure do, mister. Up in Centennial. And they came back to Laramie. I recognize the voices. Now, now, voices can fool you, take my word. We got them boxed in 30 miles away. It's them. I swear I can pick them out even without the masks. Uh, do you think it might be an idea to go down and have a look, Sheriff? Just in case. Man's an almighty fool not to follow a lead. You want I should take the scatter guns, Mr. Harper? Don't see there'll be a need, Clem, if it's them, which I know it isn't. The old peacemakers will do our talking. Yes, sir. Driver, you come and point out your suspects. Clark, you better stay put. All right with me. Just get that gold dust back. That's all I want. Say, I'd rather like to come along, too, if you don't mind, Sheriff. Ooh. You may be a greenhorn, Kendall, but you got guts. Let's go. In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. July 20th, 1958. Frontier Gentlemen on Classic Radio Theater. Nothing is more important than protecting your family and property. That's why you should make a free call right now to Vivint, the number one smart home services provider in the U.S. Vivint will make your home safer and more secure with a state-of-the-art system that's so simple to use. Vivint smart home specialists provide award-winning monitoring of your system 24-7, 365 to respond to any emergency, even when you can't. And with the 4.5-star rated Vivint smart home mobile app, control your entire house from anywhere. Locks, cameras, security system, all at your fingertips on your mobile device. Call Vivint now and get a free quote, professional installation, and full smart home service for as little as $2 per day. Equipment purchase or service agreement required. Conditions apply. Call now. A smart home is a safer home. So protect your family and your property, home or business, with a Vivint smart home system. Call 800-619-7902. That's 800-619-7902. Call now, 800-619-7902. I used to wonder when I saw people going into nice hotels, really nice hotels, taking a pillow with them. That was before I got a my pillow because I know it doesn't matter where I'm going, whether I'm going to a one star, three star, five star hotel, my pillow goes with me, whether it's just overnight or whether it's on vacation. And here's the great deal about my pillow right now the lowest price ever offered on radio or TV two my pillow premium pillows for sixty nine. Nine ninety eight. That's only thirty four ninety nine per pillow. The lowest price ever offered on radio or TV, and it's still the same pillow. Great pillow, sixty day money back guarantee, ten year warranty, and call them one eight hundred nine five one eight one seven five or. Go to MyPillow.com, use promo code USA, click on the two-pack special, and get the best deal you've ever gotten on a good night's sleep when you get a MyPillow. Balance of Nature, changing the world one life at a time. I have been plagued with esophagus acid, and it burns the esophagus. I've had it for 30 years. 
and I've had doctors give me prescriptions for it and everything. I never got rid of it. I've been on the balance of nature for about three and a half, four months. It is completely gone. I didn't even notice it. But it has to be the balance of nature because it's the only supplement I'm taking. And I just wanted you to know that because it's uh, made a world of difference in my life. I just wanted to let you know. Experience the difference for yourself. Receive 25% off your first preferred purchase of Balance of Nature. Plus, get a set of convenient travel bottles containing a free additional week's supply of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies. You will still receive free shipping on every order. This is a limited offer and may end at any time. Call 800 2468 751 or go to balanceofnature.com and use discount code USA. And you're listening to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Frontier Gentlemen, starring John Daner, July 20th, 1958. For the second time that day, I had been apprised of the fact that my guts were organs of some consequence. Once by an outlaw who had stolen my wallet and its contents... And again by an outsized sheriff who wore a diamond-studded badge and carried two tremendous guns low on his hips. The four of us walked down the street. Sheriff Harper, his deputy, whom I only knew as Clem, the stagecoach driver, and myself. We arrived at the Lazy Cape Saloon. It was fairly well crowded, but almost immediately the driver spotted the men in question and pointed them out to us. Two of them, their backs to us, standing at the bar. These are the ones. Maybe the other fellas alongside, too. I never did get a good look at them. All right. You better stay here, driver. Kendall, you stay behind Clement. If you think you recognize the voices, just sing out. You bet I will, Sheriff. Let's go, Clement. You take that Bill Smith and Wes. I don't say she can't do the job, but I'll ride along with old Colt 44. Now that's for sure. That there's one sweet piece of artillery. I beg your pardon, uh, gentlemen. What? Haven't we met before? You talking to me, mister? That's right. This the man, Kendall? It's his voice. Looks like him. The other chap's the one he called C.D. Oh, Sheriff, is there something wrong? What's your name, mister? Fred Cole. You? Sylvester. Noah Sylvester. Who are these other boys? Who are them? I don't know. I never saw them before tonight. All right, keep your hands on the bar, gents. Sheriff, we're supposed to have done something? A slight matter of a hold-up this a afternoon. A hold-up? Hold up. Us? Search him, Clem. Watch out for a belly gun. Yes, sir, Mr. Harper. But, but mister, you got the wrong man. Me and Noel, we ain't no leather slap. No. <laughs> Shucks, I don't even carry a gun. Me neither. You're clean, Sheriff. Well, sure, we're clean. <laughs> you got us mistook for two other fellas, mister. I don't think so. I'm taking you both in. The stagecoach driver identified you as well. If it's a mistake, you got nothing to worry about. If it isn't, there'll be empty saddles for you and the misty beyond. Let's go. We took them back to the sheriff's office and they were locked up, protesting rather mildly and seemingly quite unworried. I could see that their manner had a profound effect on Harper. He must have felt that in my eyes his reputation was at stake. Unequivocally, he had stated that the hold-up men were trapped 30 miles away in the mine shafts of Centennial. Now, three of the victims had identified the ringleaders under his very nose in Laramie. He must have found it rather awkward, because after an hour or so of questioning, he faced Clark, the driver, and me, and said, Gentlemen, I've questioned those boys in there for better than an hour. I reckon I know men as well as the next man, maybe some better. And I'll see here and now that those fellas are innocent. They're not. Sheriff, Listen, they I know those voices anywhere. I know how you feel. But in the morning when we bring the outlaws in, you'll thank me. And you won't have it on your conscience that two innocent cowpunchers were unjustly locked up. In other words, you're going to release these men? Well, that's about the size of it, Kendall. <laughs> in spite of the fact that all three of us know their voices, we couldn't all be wrong. Even so, you're going to let them go? Well, now, Kendall, this is a matter of law. They got nothing on them, show as they took any of your valuables. You identify a voice, but not a face, and that isn't going to stand up in court. Besides, there 
isn't much I don't know when it comes to following signs. That sure is so. Sheriff used to be a scout for Colonel Custer. Those uh, hold-up men never double back to Laramie. You can take my word for it. Uh, would, uh, would there be any harm in holding these chaps at least until you bring in the others in the morning? Well... A- at least on suspicion. Kendall, I wouldn't want you writing in your paper that the sheriff of Laramie took the law in his own hands. I've got a mighty big job to do in this town, mighty big. You're worrying about your job in his newspaper. I'm worrying about my $5,000 they robbed off me. Well, I guess I could hold them till morning. I could do that. That's all we want. You know, ever since I seen that big fella without his mask, I got a feeling. What sort of a feeling, driver? Incidentally, what is your name? Driver? Elwood Driver. (laughs) Kind of gets you, don't it? Me being a stagecoach driver and all. Driver! Well, anyways, about that fella, I I keep thinking maybe I seen him somewhere. Where? I don't know. Hey, Sheriff! Yeah? What do you want, Cole? Me and Sylvester, we was wondering, how about some grub? Sure. Clem, go across the eatery and get them to rustle up some grub for the boys. Sure will, Mr. Harper. I guess I'll check in at a hotel and get some shut-eye. You can share my room if you want, Kendall. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, I was... Sheriff! Yeah? Well, me and Sylvester, we just thought of something. Maybe we can prove that we ain't the fellas you're looking for. All right, cool. Speak your piece. Well, now, these fellas, they say they was held up about ten miles outside of Laramie. That's right. And what time? Sixish. Yeah, what I tell you, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, Sylvester, he remembers these folks who could tell you we was right here in Laramie all afternoon and about six-ish. Now, if that's so, we couldn't be in two places to once, could we? That's for sure. Now, that's for sure. You'll have to admit that, Chef. Well, who are your witnesses, boys? Three fellows down to the Sherman Hotel. We were playing billiard, drinking beer with them. I, I, I don't recollect their last names... See, there was a, a Jim... Jim... Jim Hankers. Jim Hankers, Hankers, that was. Yeah. And then Zach... And Zach and a brother of his, uh, uh, Jake. That's right. You go ask for them, Sheriff. I'll tell you. Well, you'll find I'm a fair man, boys. If you're telling the truth, I'll be fair with you. I knew you'd give us a square deal, Sheriff. It's quite convenient, isn't it? What? Those three witnesses popping up. Ooh, might be so, Ken. Man's innocent till proved guilty, that's the law. Yeah, but there was six of them in the holdup. Kendall plugged one. That leaves five. Two you got in there, the other three down the Sherman Hotel. My thoughts exactly. You just saying that five outlaws doubled back on me? You reckon I lost the trail of five men? You reckon they'd all be fool enough to come into Laramie after a daylight holdup? They might be smart enough to. Mr. Kendall, that's a mighty big paper you write for. And I guess you do a real fine job, but you're no lawman. I guess it's not a... I be impatient with you, gents, because I felt sorry for you. But I'm the uh, sheriff of Laramie, and from here on in, I'm going to have to run things my way. Sheriff, it's... No, Soon it's... as Clem gets back, I'm walking down to the Sherman. July 20th, 1958, The Frontier Gentleman on Classic Radio Theater. You know, for a while I worked in a hotel and I really used to go, why do people bring their own pillows with them? Well, once I got a pillow, I understood. Because doesn't matter how good the hotel is, doesn't matter whether it's a two-star, three-star, five-star hotel, it doesn't matter how nice the hotel is if you don't get a good night's sleep. And the key to getting a good night's sleep is is a my pillow now the best deal ever offered on my pillow right now you go to mypillow.com enter our promo code usa click the two pack special and folks you're going to get two my pillow premium pillows for 69.98 that's 34.99 per pillow the lowest price ever offered on radio or tv now, it's the same my pillow we've been talking about for months. It stays cool all night long. You don't wake up but to flip the pillow over in the middle of the night. It keeps its shape. You don't have to fluff it up in the middle of the night. 60-day money back guarantee, 10-year warranty. And that's the deal. 
Try it for 60 days. You don't like it, send it back. 10-year warranty. Tell me another pillow you've got that's got a 10-year warranty. No. Nah. And the great thing is it's always as clean and fresh as new. If you get in a mess or after, you know, a couple of weeks, throw it in the washing machine, toss it in the dryer, fluff it up, and you got a brand new My Pillow. The lowest price ever offered on My Pillow, two My Pillow Premium Pillows, 69.98, 34.99 a pillow. You see if you can find a price like that anywhere else. Go to mypillow.com, click on the two pack special, enter my promo code USA, or call 1 800 951 8175. The best deal ever. And by the way, that promo code USA works on anything on the MyPillow website, mypillow.com. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Now the conclusion of Frontier Gentlemen, starring John Daner, July 20th, 1958. Soon as Clem gets back, I'm walking down to the Sherman. If I find those boys that called in Sylvester say they were with this afternoon, that's all I need to know. You'll free them? That's what I aim to do. It was useless to argue with them. A few minutes later, his deputy Clem returned, and Sheriff Harper strode manfully out of his office. Driver and Clark left a moment afterward as they were beaten men, and were going to the nearest saloon to get drunk. I decided to stay. I had to see what I knew was going to happen. A half an hour later, he came back. One look at the smile on his face told me all I needed to know. Clem, unlock the cell. Yes, sir, Mr. Harper. Why, you found them? Yeah. Well, uh, just as a matter of curiosity, Sheriff, if they were lying, would you have known it? Yeah, I'd know it. That's why I'm Sheriff. Come on out, boys. You found them, huh, Sheriff? And they told you where we was. I owe you gents an apology. Oh, no, that ain't necessary, Sheriff. You were only doing your duty. Well, it's mighty large of you to take it that way. Fred, I guess you'll be on our way, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, say, uh, Mr. Kendall, uh, that there's a right handsome watch you're wearing, Mr. Kendall, but I don't suppose you'd want to part with it. Well, uh, so long. Real you. nice knowing you, Sheriff. Yeah, so long, Sheriff. So long, yeah. Clem. So he, long. He's, he's the same one. It's I tell you, Sheriff. all right, Kendall. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. He take is it this. easy. What? He's the... It's all Mr. right. Mr. Harper. Oh. Mr. Harper? You know, I... I was just looking through these wanted posters that come in in the morning mail. Yeah. Now, now there's one picture here. Uh. The fella's got a kind of familiar face. Here, here, you see? Yeah. Yeah. Jesse James, $5,000 reward for the capture of dead or alive. Chair. I remember, I remember where I seen that fella. He's Jesse James. That's who? Jesse James. But you hear what I'm saying? Jesse James. Jesse James? And uh, Mr. James just left, Sheriff. I don't think he'll be back. This time, Jesse James left Laramie for good. Followed a day later by Sheriff Will Harper and his inestimable deputy, Clem. The irate citizens of Laramie gave them quite a send-off. As to how I recovered my $20 and Thad Clark at least a part of his gold is a story I shall telegraph next week. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Ted DeCorsia, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, Jack Moyles, Vic Perrin, and Stacey Harris. (laughs) 
Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Bud Sewell speaking. July 20th, 1958, The Frontier Gentleman on Classic Radio Theater. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-215-5141. 800-215-5141. That's 800-215-5141. If you enjoy our classic radio theater broadcasts and want to start building a collection of your own, go to classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. There you'll find links to great classic radio collections on CD, along with links to great reading on classic radio, plus classic radio theater on demand. Check out our webpage, available now at classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. And enjoy. Tired of overpaying for the little blue pill? What if you could get the exact same results for just a fraction of the price? Guaranteed! Well, now you can with sildenafil, the active ingredient in the blue pill. With 20 milligram generic sildenafil tablets, you get the exact same results for less than $2 per pill. And again, the results are guaranteed. That's right, absolutely guaranteed results for a fraction of the cost of the little blue pill. So give your wallet a break and call us toll-free at 800-365-6017 to get your generic sildenafil delivered discreetly to your door. And of course, while saving hundreds of dollars, you'll also be saving time by saying goodbye to those long, embarrassing pharmacy lines once and for all. Again, just call 800-365-6017 and get your generic sildenafil with a 100% money-back guarantee. Getting your pills doesn't get any easier or cheaper than this, so call 800-365-6017 now. Are you drowning in debt? Are you struggling to make minimum payments? Did you know that on average, a household with at least one credit card struggles with over $15,000 in credit card debt? If this sounds like you, know that it's not your fault. Credit card debt happens to good people. Credit card companies lure you in with low introductory rates and low minimum payments. Before you know it, you're in over your head. National Debt Relief has helped thousands of good people just like you become debt-free with our Debt Reset Program that will dramatically reduce your debt down to a fraction of what you owe. Our Debt Reset Program is customized to get you debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months with one low monthly payment. If you owe over $10,000 in credit card debt or even personal loans, call 800 274 9490. There are no upfront fees or out of pocket expenses. You don't pay a dime until we succeed. Call now to see how the debt reset program can work for you. 800 274 9490. That's 800 274 9490. 800 274 9490. Now on Classic Radio Theater, The Wind Up, Part 5 of the five part Yours Truly Johnny Dollar Story, The Star of Cape Town Matter. This was originally broadcast July 20th. 1956. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Ben Stacy, partner. Oh, hi, Stacy. We'll be docking a day car in an hour or so now. Yeah, I know. Don't forget, I'm going to show you and Helen around the town. Okay, I'll be ready. Say, Dollar, that was a little excitement we had aboard ship last night, huh? That steward who fell overboard? That's putting it politely. Well, what do you mean? I think he got pushed. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location at sea on the Southern Empress, en route Cape Town to Dakar. To the Home Office Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town matter. Expense account concluded. (laughs) Item 12.50 cents, room service on two aspirins. 
Right from the start, this whole deal had been a series of headaches. Headache one, Andrew Forbes, international playboy and owner of the star of Cape Town, insured for 150000 bucks. Forbes was tossing that stone around like it was a cheap toy. He wound up murdered, the diamond missing. Forbes' probable killer, Julio Biak, was in a Cape Town jail at the moment, but his confederate was still on the loose. The steward who could have told me who the confederate was had been fished out of the drink dead last night. Now we were going ashore at Dakar. And whoever had that diamond could make it hard for me to find. It could be Stacy, the boy from the wide open spaces. It could be Helen, traveling companion to Agatha Forbes. And I knew if it did turn out to be Helen, it'd leave me kind of sick inside. Worst of all, it could be somebody I didn't even know about. Hence the aspirin. <laughs> Stacy had asked us to meet him at the gangway at 10 o'clock, but he was nowhere in sight when I showed up. Pretty soon, Helen and Agatha Forbes came along. Good morning, Johnny. Hi, Helen. Miss Forbes. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. Helen just told me about what happened last night. Somebody trying to seize her on deck. How dreadful. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you, Miss Forbes. No, I... no, I'm glad you did. Anything happened during the night, Helen? No, I kept my stateroom door locked. Well, here you are. Sorry I'm late. I guess I overslept. Already? Already. Say, now, I'm mighty glad to see you with us, Miss Forbes. I was hoping you'd come. I won't be going with you. I'm going to stay aboard and rest. Oh, come on now, Miss Forbes. Do you good to let your hair down and frisk around a bit. Really, Mr. Stacy, I assure you I don't feel like frisking around a bit. I'll see you when you get back. Say, now, I guess I put my foot in my mouth talking that way. Oh, well, I usually do anyway. It's sure big enough. <laughs> well, one thing I had to give Stacy credit for, he was a good guy. He threaded us through street after street in the native quarter of the car. Narrow passageways crowded with people in stalls where native hawkers were peddling all sorts of merchandise. This is fascinating, isn't it? Well, like I told you, Helen, day car's quite a place. I love it. I wonder if it isn't about time we started back to the ship. Say, just a minute, Helen. I think there's a shop around here you'd be interested in. Silks, perfume, stuff like that. You interested? Sure. Well, let me get my bearings a minute. You need more perfume? Johnny, does it bother you that I still wear this perfume Andy Forbes gave me? If it does, I won't. Yeah, yeah, the shop I had in mind is right down the street. Come on. Stacy led us to the shop. Helen began trying on dresses and robes. This I didn't like. If she had the diamond, this was a golden opportunity to pass it along. But there wasn't much I could do about it. Then all of a sudden I realized that Stacy was nowhere in sight. I went outside and started along the street looking for him. Then I spotted a man following me, a native in a burnoose. So I ducked down the next alley to shake him. But he didn't shake. Then I noticed that this was a blind alley. The native was closing in, and what he had in his hand looked strangely like a knife. Suddenly a door beside me opened. Come on in, Dollar. Stacy. I said come on in. A gun in front of me, a knife behind me. I guess I don't have much choice. So, you had your stooge steer me here. I figured sooner or later you'd start looking for me, so I just thought I'd make it easy for you. Oh, thanks. Stick around, Hassan. I may need you. Very well. Hassan's a pretty effective persuader, Dollar. How jolly. So you're the boy I've been after, Stacy. Correction. You're the boy I've been after, Dollar. What are you talking about? A diamond called the Star of Cape Town. Let's have it. Oh, look, don't give me that routine. Forbes was knifed by your buddy Julio Biak in Cape Town. You killed the steward aboard ship to keep him from telling me it was you who sent the cablegram to Julio. Right, boy, Dollar. That should mean you've got the diamond. Smarten up, boy. You think I'd have arranged this little reception for you if I already had the stone? Wait a minute. You're the one who was doing all the room searching aboard ship? I'm the one. Now let's have it. I don't have it, Stacy, and I don't know where it is. Oh, you got a real sense of humor, Dollar. So has Hassan. Why don't you show him, Hassan? Very well. <coughs> oh. Hey, look, this isn't going to do you any good. It's not going to do your face any good either, Hassan. Hey, look, you... Don't try it, Dollar. I guarantee you'll get yourself shot. Now, look. So you're a nice, brave boy, but you're being foolish. It's no good trying to snow me. I got it all figured out. Just what have you got all figured out? It isn't in her stateroom. It isn't in yours. I searched them both again this morning before we came ashore. That's why I was late. You're talking about Helen. Who else? That's why I steered her to that shop to try on dresses. The little lady who owns it is a friend of mine. She'd have found the diamond if Helen was carrying Helen? It. Yeah, Helen. How do you know she had it? Process of elimination, buddy. She was the only one with Forbes before Julio got to him. I've been watching you and Helen like a hawk dollar. There's only one time she could have given you the stone. That was during that tender little clinch on deck last night, right under my nose. Right under? 
What's the matter, Dollar? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, what Stacy had just said popped the whole deal into place suddenly. Right under my nose. Right where it had been all the time. I tell you what, Dollar, you got just five minutes to tell me where that diamond is. Hassan will be here with you, and he's going to start persuading again if you don't talk. I had to get back to the ship somehow. That meant I'd have to do some fast talking. I looked at Hazan. I couldn't tell which was glittering more, his black eyes or the knife he held against my throat. One wrong word, and I knew he'd start carving. Hazan. What do you want? Um, you come from the desert, don't you? Why? You're a long way from home. Ever get homesick? What do you mean? Oh, I, I was just thinking, with half the money from that diamond, you could buy yourself an oasis with all the trimmings. Do not worry. Stacy will pay me well when we get the jewel. Well, what's he giving you for this job? Three goats and a new burnoose? Dollar. Hey, he will be easy with that knife. It's just that everybody who works for Stacy seems to wind up getting paid off the wrong way. The wrong... Take Julio Biak for one. The guy Stacy hired to get the diamond in the first place. He's roosting in the Cape Town jail right now. You lie. Oh, you can check on it. Then there's the steward who sent Stacy's message to Biak. He got shoved overboard. You can check on that, too. But, uh... I'm sure a thing like that wouldn't ever happen to you. Go on, Dollar. Okay. I know where the diamond is. How do I know I can trust you? You can come with me to get it. I don't know. I... At least he was thinking about it, and that's all I wanted. His eyes got that faraway look. That's what I was waiting for. I whipped my arm up and knocked his knife loose. I buried my fist in his midsection. He jackknifed. A rabbit punch finished him off. I dove for the wall just as Stacy came charging in. What the... I kicked the gun out of his hand. I went to work. Stacy was rugged, but I finally made it. I got the Dakar police to put Stacy and Azan on ice, patched up my face, and headed back to the ship. But there was something else hurting me a lot more than my face. Helen. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Where have you been? I was... Your face, what happened? Skip it. I have to hand it to you, Helen. That was a real Class A snow job you pulled on me. What are you talking about? Yeah. It was right under my nose all the time. The perfume Forbes gave to you. Now, where's the bottle? Well, on my dressing table, okay. but... Okay. Yeah, a pretty fancy bottle. Solid base. Or maybe not so solid. Johnny! Uh-huh. In the base of the bottle. Star of Cape Town. I'll bet you're real surprised, aren't you? Johnny, I didn't know it was there. I didn't have any idea. I swear it. She's telling the truth, Mr. Dollar. Miss Forbes. Wow. Well, Agatha, that gun looks sort of out of character. Perhaps. But I won't hesitate to use it if necessary. I don't understand. It was cruel of Andrew and me to use you like this, Helen, but we saw no other alternative. Wait a minute. You and your brother rigged this whole deal right from the beginning, didn't you? Sure. Sure, because you slipped yesterday, Agatha, when you told me you discussed your brother's party with him. But back in Cape Town, he told me it was a surprise party for you. Johnny, I still... Oh, it's simple, Helen. That bottle of perfume would have turned up missing when you got to New York. Agatha would have appropriated it. One big question, Agatha. Why all this? Have you any idea what it means to see somebody drag the family name through the dirt... Time after time with his wild escapades? And have you any idea what those escapades cost? Your brother was in debt, huh? Terribly. We were pressed to the wall. Oh, why didn't you sell the diamond? We were bound by the will not to. But arrangements were made with someone in New York. What we could get for the diamond, plus what we could collect from the insurance. It would be enough. Oh, nice little scheme. But you didn't figure on Julio Biak trying for the diamond in Cape Town and killing your brother in the process. No. First, I didn't know what to do. But it soon became clear that more than ever I had to go through with a plan. My brother's creditors began to make trouble right after his murder. The diamond, please. Oh, now look. Don't you get it, Agatha? You're licked. What do you mean? You've done all this to protect the Forbes name. Of course. You failed. The story's out. No. It's known only to the two of you. How are you going to keep us from talking? I'll do whatever is necessary. Bribe us? Kill us? 
Sorry, neither one's going to work. Mr. Dollar, do not force You're me... You're trapped, Agatha. By the same thing that got you into all this, the Forbes name. Are you going to brand it with murder? No. No, I don't think you are. I don't think you could. I... I don't... I, I don't know. Please, please, Mr. Dollar. I'll take the gun, Agatha. Thanks. Oh, Johnny. It's okay, Ellen. I guess I... I have failed, haven't I? All the way. Expense account item 13, $375.50. Transportation and incidentals from Dakar home. Expense account total, $1,283.60. I turn the diamond over to the authorities for safekeeping and Agatha Forbes to face charges of fraud. Julio Biak and Ben Stacy were indicted for the murder of Andrew Forbes. Remarks about Agatha. I guess she did what she did because she thought the end justified the means, which is one of the oldest sucker traps of them all. About Helen? Well, now that she's no longer a suspect, could be I'm no longer building up to a big letdown with her. At least it hasn't come yet, and I'm still waiting. And the waiting is real pleasant. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a yacht that wasn't there and a man who wasn't there. They never were. But that's where I found them. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is written by Robert Reif and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gene Tatum, Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Chester Stratton, Marvin Miller, and D.J. Thompson. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. July 20th, 1956, yours truly, Johnny Dollar on Classic Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, make tomorrow your D-Day. Get an extra bond for defense. Step into any bank or post office and buy yourself a profitable share in America's future. As an investment, bonds are better than ever. They can help you save safely, conveniently, and profitably. So whether you already buy on the payroll savings plan where you work, or the bond-a-month plan where you bank. Get an extra bond for defense tomorrow. And hope you won't wait until tomorrow to check us out at ClassicRadio.stream. That's the webpage, ClassicRadio.stream. There you can stream our Classic Radio Theater podcast on demand, learn more about Classic Radio collecting, and contact me, ClassicRadio.stream. And if you would like to uh, find our podcast, they're also available anywhere fine podcasts are served. The Apple Podcast app, the Google Podcast app, the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, Spreaker, anywhere fine podcasts are served. All you have to do is search for USA Classic Radio Theater. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Wyatt Cox. Do me a favor and thank this radio station. Support the advertisers. They're the ones who pay the bills to make this free. And uh, tell a friend. Best favor you'll do them this week. Let them know the great radio shows are back. Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station and the USA Radio Network.